I've dry aged quite a few things, including prime bone-in ribeyes, beautiful strip loin which I cut them into incredible New York strip steaks, and of course we can't forget the queen of all meats, picanha, which I did for a hundred days. That is just insane. And most of my experience with dry age has been wonderful, and one of my favorite things to do with beef. If you never had dry age before, it is hard to understand the reason why we go through this entire process. But always in the end, it leaves you wanting more every single time. I even dry aged a brisket for 60 days, and it was probably one of the most delicious and surprising results I've ever had with this dry aging stuff. And today I'm going to try to dry age one of the most popular cuts there is. It is the filet mignon which comes from the tenderloin. Filet mignon is already tender as is, and my idea with this experiment is to find out if it is worth dry aging it or not. Because usually dry age does two things. One, it makes the meat a lot tender, and it also changes slightly the flavor profile of the meat. So I'm really excited to find out how this is gonna turn out. So let's do it. I started with a whole tenderloin. As you can see, it is not trimmed. I got it from Sterling Silver Premium Meats. It is very important that you use an untrimmed tenderloin, because when you are dry aging, it will create a crust, and you want all that extra fat and silver skin to be there before dry aging. To dry aging, I am using a special bag. It is called Umai Dry. I hate to call it a bag because it is not just a regular standard bag that you have at home. Umai actually calls them a membrane, and what this bag does, it allows moisture out without allowing any of the bad stuff to go in. So in essence, it evaporates all the moistures out of the meat, tenderizing the meat and also changing the flavor profile. And when you open the bag, it comes with everything that you need in the kit. It is simple and easy to use. Once that's done, dry it well and you are ready to start dry aging. You can use a regular cutting board, but I prefer aluminum paper to make everything easier. Try to keep everything as clean as possible. I use gloves and I recommend it. Then the next step is pretty easy, just transfer directly into the my bag. It is important to keep the meat moist. Remember, this is a membrane, and the moisture will help it stick to the meat. This will give you a much better result. Once the meat has stuck into the membrane, it is okay to wipe out the excess, but never on the meat itself. The kit comes with this special little fabric that allows you to suck all the air out with your vacuum sealer. Once the air has been removed, it is important to seal it twice. Right after that, just fold all the additional parts. Now I'm afraid that my tenderloin will just lay flat completely and then when I cut it open, I won't have perfect round shapes. So for that reason, I'm tying it up so that it keeps its shape. Once that was done, I transferred it to a cooling rack so that the air can circulate throughout the entire thing, allowing it to dry from the top and bottom and all sides. Now when I did this, I had a little bit of extra air towards the edges. It was a simple fix, I just cut it out, pushed all the air out as much as I could, and resealed it with my vacuum sealer. After that, my tenderloin was ready to be dry aged, and all there is left to do is put it on my regular refrigerator for a total of 35 days. After 35 days, this is what it looks like. As you can see, the meat shrinked quite a bit. Tying the tenderloin was a perfect decision because it kept its round shape. I removed all the butcher's twine and opened it up. As expected, it had a wonderful smell. The smell of dry age, which is difficult to explain. Now all there's left to do is cut them into steaks. Check it out. As you can see, they turn out as good as it gets and I'm very pleased with these results. To do a real fair comparison, I am getting another tenderloin. I want to compare and see if there's a lot of difference between a fresh tenderloin and a dry aged tenderloin. I'm looking for tenderness and flavor. So I quickly trimmed this one up and I put one next to the other and here you can really tell the difference between them. Check it out. Once that was done, I cut the fresh one into beautiful filet mignons, and all my beautiful steaks were ready. Then I had a real hard choice, which is to choose which ones to try it out today. So I went with the best ones I could find. And these are today's contender. As you can see, the intramuscular fat is quite similar. So this is gonna be a good test. Then I quickly removed all the trimmings from the dry aged, and I was left with two beautiful steaks. To really taste the profile of the meat, I am not using any garlic powder or pepper.
pepper. I'm only seasoning with salt and basting it a little bit with regular standard unsalted butter. I'm using regular table salt so that the penetration of the salt can be as quick as possible. Today I'm going to be cooking these steaks in direct heat instead of reverse sear. I'm first going to put a beautiful sear on them and then slowly cook them until they come into an internal temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. But enough talking, it is time to cook them. So let's do it. I'm ready to go, man. Are you ready to go, Angel? I'm ready to go. For My this nephew one. Angel is ready to go for this <laughs> one, and I don't blame him. Today I use a different technique, everybody, and the reason I use a different technique, which is just a regular way you normally cook a steak, because I wanted to get a very nice and strong sear on these filet mignons. So yeah, that it color looks really nice on the outside. Very good. Maybe want to eat fast. <laughs> You hungry? Let's go. <laughs> okay, so we have our very first steak here. I want to know if there's any difference for you. So what's this one? This one, I'm not going to tell you. We're going to tell you after. All right, so that we can find out if there's a difference on taste profile, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go for it. Ah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Wow, I think mm. I like this one. You think you like this one? I think I like this one, bro. All right, enough talking. You ready for the second one? Let's go first. All right, let's go. Oh my God, this one is way, okay. Enough talking, cheers, buddy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. What? No, no. What? What is this, Angel? All right, bro. Okay. Which one do you think it's better, more tender, and different flavor profile? This one more tender. Definitely. This one is like chewing, I would say, the texture of jello. Almost, yeah. Yeah, like jello. You bite on it, there is zero resistance. I think it's just a little bit tougher than jello, <laughs> though, because I could break jello with my tongue. Uh, yeah, I think we might be able to bring it with your tongue on this one. But the crust is so pronounced, right? You've got a really yeah, good crust, sear on that the one. The crust won't let you. That's why I'm like... Right. This one here is soft. extra... Do you think it's so soft that it's too soft? No, 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 no. No? It's perfect. It's perfect. You know, when I started this experiment, I really thought that it's not worth... By the way, this is dry age, Angel. We got the dry age filet mignon versus a traditional filet mignon. So is it worth dry aging a filet mignon? Yes, I agree with... He's a silent man right now. <laughs> it is worth dry aging as long wow. as you do it untrimmed. If you get a tenderloin that is already trimmed, I think you're gonna have too much loss. But I if think, it's untrimmed, it's good. Yes. I think that if you keep explaining the flavor, uh -huh. you're gonna keep finishing I'm it. I'm gonna keep eating it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.
Alright, bro. Oh, you ready to? <laughs> Hold on, bro. We gotta share. Uh -oh. Hold on. Bro, I have a knife. Tranquilo. I have a I knife. Have, I have teeth. You have teeth? <laughs>